So Ali to LA is an artist residency in downtown Los Angeles here at Transformative Arts. And it has been a two month partnership with PBS uh, involving six local artists from Los Angeles and one international artist. And we are imagining what the legacy of Muhammad Ali's time in Los Angeles has done for people of color and for artists in particular. It's like cereal boxes was a thing that I treasure. I, you know, I, I, we could never afford them, but I would look in the aisles and I would just treasure them. And I was a Muhammad Ali fan, you know, and uh, reflecting back when I was doing this project, I realized, oh, I never saw Muhammad Ali on any cereal box covers. I you see Roy Rogers and all these other people that, you know, so, so I just started just playing with this idea of, oh, I can maybe template out a cereal box cover, and then why not template out this fantasy of um, cereal box toys and you know this whole land. Uh, Muhammad Ali, the only commercials at the time that he was in were these decon commercials. Decon, like to kill you know roaches, you know. And I mean, at the time, it related to me because we, I mean, I, we had roaches. So I was like, oh, cool, decon. We got to go get that stuff. Reflecting back, that's the only image I saw of Muhammad Ali as a, you know, when I was a big fan. I mean, there were other positive. I mean, he had, you know, to be fair, he had a cartoon and, you know, that kind of thing. But I don't know, there is a little bit of slight there, you know, yeah, that I, I'm playing with. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think the fact that Muhammad Ali was an artist, which clearly we see in his life in so many ways, not only was he a painter, but he was a poet. The way he moved certainly just exuded his artistry and creativity and the way that he designed his life, you know, this sort of multifaceted, multi-layered human being that could code switch, that could, you know, survive really an onslaught of white America taking away his title, taking away his ability to call himself by his name, um, taking away his ability to earn money for his family and for the things that he believed in. And yet he does what black people do, which is resist, um, survive and thrive. And so I think that that is the artistry of black life around the world and certainly here in the United States as well. And, and so his art practice is his life. I think one of the things that happens with men, particularly black men, is we're separated from our humanity, we're separated from all the aspects of our lives that generate our humanity. And for me, Ali as a father is very important because it talks about him beyond his activism, beyond his athleticism, it talks about his humanity. Um, when he changed his name from Cassius Clay to Muhammad Ali, I thought that that was a strong and powerful and profound move. And the fact that he would go into the ring and ask people, what's my name, while he's delivering jabs to the face is a powerful move. And so what are the, one of the things that I wanted to do to reiterate that power through athleticism, through the fight, is point out the fact that we fight through painting, we fight through art making, we fight through object making, we're fighting the perception war. And Ali was huge at fighting the perception war. I am working with wax because it allows this kind of ephemeral nature that, that pushes um, the image back. It's um, pixelated or fractured. Um, so there's multiple reads depending on where you are. Yeah, I, I feel like he had an intuitive intelligence, a way of um, connecting with people. You know, it was the public persona, and I think there was the private persona. There's a religious aspect and political, and so I feel like the the wax allows me to to look at all of those layers. My community engagement work is is around that, like providing a space for for many voices, many histories, many perspectives, including the imaginative. So when I was asked to conceive of a project about Muhammad Ali, I wanted to focus on his legacy here in Los Angeles. 
He moved here in 1979 after he retired. He bought a very large, beautiful house in a swanky part of town, and yet he didn't rest. He decided he could not rest. And what he did was he started to develop himself into a humanitarian who traveled the world for causes that were near and dear to his heart in black and brown communities and um, near and dear to his heart in terms of his uh, Islamic faith. And he became someone that the local population and the world could um, revere. The, the cracking uh, in the surface is uh, partially inspired by my, uh, uh, the loss of my mother, who uh, had dementia uh, for the last three years. And watching her mind uh, go and kind of fracture in the way in which it did, um, I couldn't help but find some uh, affinity towards uh, uh, Muhammad Ali in the later parts of his life, um, thinking about his mind uh, going through a similar kind of phenomena. But um, even though the, the mind is fracturing, it's still whole. Um, so I was trying to, to do that with these works, is to try to show that they're uh, changing, they're shifting, they're a little bit uh, irregular and strange in their formation, um, but they're still beautiful and they're still, still powerful and still dangerous. I already worked with community. I wanted artists, not in the term of social practice, but I wanted artists who were teachers, artists who did public art projects, artists who were interested in community building um, endeavors. I work um, as a teacher's assistant, as a substitute teacher, and I work with kids. And uh, most of these kids I get to know on a personal level where I meet the parents. And like I've seen these beautiful clips of Ali, you know, also like talking to children and the children are just like all over him with big smiles and like that's a pretty special person, you know, if you could connect with kids in that manner, um, I think it's a really beautiful thing. So I think Ali definitely everywhere he went, you know, like if he went to Venezuela, if he went to uh, South Africa, if he went to like, he always had that beautiful thing about just gathering people together and leaving like a really lasting impression uh, within that community, within those people. So um, I know I'm not at Ali's level, but you know, if we do even just a little bit of what he's trying to do, I think uh, we're heading towards the right direction. I am a judoka, and so part of my project has to do with engaging with Ali as a judoka. And so that's why I began to do research, because I didn't know much about boxing until I started to do research and try to understand the, how multifaceted Ali was. And so I tried to find a way in, uh, and, and uh, I was really fascinated by his use of language and his embodied rhetorical power. It means that he's able to not just speak the words, but actually embody them with his own practice or through the symbolism of his practice as a boxer, as a gifted boxer. And so the, the words become more powerful. We have seven incredibly diverse artists, some from Los Angeles, some from abroad, um, who have come here to live and work. And how they feel about him is reflected in, in the work that they've done here for the last two months. Hi, I'm Jill Moniz, I'm the founder of Transformative Arts, and I'd like to invite you to join us for the opening exhibition of Ali to LA, September 18th from 12 to 3 p.m. We're located at 410 South Spring Street in downtown LA.